Today, let's talk about the constantly overhyped camera gear. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And I always appreciate the early thumbs up because making the photo and video process smoother and easier is always the goal. But too often products are presented as the solution to all your creative problems. To be clear, these items have their place and can be super useful in very specific circumstances. And it's always great to appreciate them from a distance, but that doesn't mean that you need to go out and grab one for yourself. So let's dismantle this hype train. The first is gimbals. While they are great and are capable of capturing some fantastic shots, but I would say that they are more of a specialty item than anything else. They are also a pain to set up, to work, and actually in many cases slow down the creative process. If you have ever been on a shoot and waiting for the gimbal to be set up, you know the frustration that can mount. The amount of control that is needed to work these properly is far more than people are willing to put in. And in the end, the shots are not ideal and not as stable as advertised. And you end up still needing to further stabilize in post-production. And even more often, they end up sitting on the shelf being underutilized. Some of the best gimbals require two people, one to hold a device and someone else to focus on the subject. And don't even get me started on the smartphone gimbals. I just don't understand those. Most phones today have great stabilization built right into them. I'd rather spend the extra money on in-body image stabilization lenses or cameras, which are fantastic and there's a wide variety available today. Drones is another item that falls into the specialty category and it's usually vastly overhyped. It is true that they can produce some fantastic images. And if you know you're visiting an amazing location, for sure, then it's definitely worth it. But I've seen so many people buy a drone, use it for a week, or more like try to learn it for a week and set it aside. And now with all the requirements needed to just fly these, and coupled with the amount of time to set up to get a good 10 second clip, just make it not worth the time. And one simple crash can set you back hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Drones definitely fall into the category of rent it or hire a pilot to get the shots that you need. Sliders are like gimbals for me. They have their purpose and place, but mostly they take way too long to set up to get the right shot, especially motorized sliders. There is a dedication to using these, usually pre-planning and understanding the limitations. I find them fantastic for product shots and for shots that are planned for them, where a shot has to be repeated over and over again for VFX layering or repeat takes. But for the most part, they too just sit in a case for when they are needed, which isn't that regularly. And don't even get me started on the travel size ones because majority of the time, they just stay in the backpack. Instead, I've always found more success with the portal rail, like this one from Rig Wheels. Once it's set up, you test your shot and you're able to get great footage and they start around 10 feet long and are expandable, which allows you to get some great shots with minimal equipment. And they cost roughly the same as some of the better sliders or you can rent them or build one yourself. Every time a new specialty lens is introduced, the same cycle happens. Everyone wants to use it until it's played out. Like the Super Macro Pro lens. Unless you are one of the first people to use it or have a very specific application for it, these types of lenses are way overhyped. It's like when the Matrix introduced bullet time and everybody wanted to use it, but everyone references back to, that's the Matrix shot. So unless you're going to have a very specific shot that is designed to utilize it at its best, I would say just rent them, play around, get the FOMA out of your system and buy a good versatile lens that you will be able to use in the majority of situations. It seems every few months there is a new camera bag launching on Kickstarter that promises it will be the last camera bag you'll ever need. Unless you're traveling all the time and need a bag to do everything, get something simple to limit how much you actually carry. Your back will thank you. Keep your everyday carry light. It's how you use the gear, not the gear itself. Try this, over the next few months, assess how much gear you actually use on your day-to-day -day outings. Assess how often you actually switch out your lenses and pack accordingly. And find a bag that is comfortable for you, not just one that you can jam the most stuff in. For me, it's the Everyday Messenger Bag from Peak Designs. It's pretty small, but it takes everything that I usually carry with me. If you need to use it for work consistently, then get yourself a case and be smart about how you transport your gear. 
My feelings for camera cages are interesting because unless you need to rig out your camera, I would recommend keeping your camera light. I find that 90% of the time camera cages are a vanity or optics for clients or people watching you. An extension of this is matte boxes. Again, if you need it, go for it. But really ask yourself, do I need to mount all this crap on a camera? It's okay to record internally with most cameras today and just put on a good mic on the hot shoot. When I first started out on YouTube, I actually fell for this one. The small tripods, the switch pods, the gorilla pods. They're all pretty useless, especially for me. And most of the time they just add weight to the camera bag. They fall over, they don't get the angle you need or want. And I end up just propping the camera on something or I bring a proper travel tripod that I can go high or low when needed. LUTs and presets are fantastic when you're working on a project and you're trying to create a look for that project because most of the shots will utilize it throughout your project. But the thing that makes LUTs and presets fantastic is also the biggest problem with them because most of them are created with a particular look and style that was shot on the day. And almost all of them need to be tweaked in some way or another with any footage that wasn't shot in that particular way. This is the classic case of give a man a fish versus teach a man to fish. If you learn how to create your own LUTs and presets, and take the time to learn the tools just a little bit, you'll be able to create your own unique looks that fit your personal style. Now, each of these items on this list have their place in the creative process. And I wanna be very clear, I have used these tools to help produce amazing images, but they are not as hyped as they are made to be for everyday use. Again, I would say that these are more specialty items, not something that should live in your camera bag every single day. When choosing any gear that is being overhyped, make sure that it's actually something that is useful for you now and in the future. And always avoid buying something that will end up just sitting on the shelf or you have to resell it later. If you found this video helpful, here's a playlist that may help you some more. I also do live streams on my second channel and do deep dives on the creative process and discuss freelancer financials. As always, thanks for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe. I'm Rafael, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.